This week, I'll be taking a look at two Xbox Live Arcade titles. Both of these titles were highly recommended to me, and have both received fairly positive reviews. But mainstream reviews mean nothing here, as I will be giving my own personal reviews of them. So, let's start off by looking at The Misadventures of PB Winterbottom. This game starts off with the protagonist, whose name is in the title of the game, PB Winterbottom. Winterbottom is a pie-thieving fiend in the town of Bakersburg. Poontang Pie? <laughs> no, not that kind of pie. As a result of his constant thieving, he has caused mass destruction and chaos throughout the town. But this matters little to PB, as he only cares about thieving pie. One night, a mysterious, delicious-looking, and magical pie comes to his home. PB, of course, pursues the pie, and that's where the oddness begins. While chasing the pie, PB starts to realize that he has found the ability to manipulate time. With this new power, PB creates clones of himself in order to help himself attain a large amount of pie, along with chasing the mysterious magical pie. In order to make clones, you press and hold the right trigger while doing any action. Once you are finished, you let go of the trigger, and a clone will show up and do the exact same action in a loop. Interacting with Winterbottom's clones is essential in collecting the pie. You can either use them to collect pie, throw switches for you to reach otherwise inaccessible areas, use their heads to jump on for a boost, or you could smack them to reach a pie at an elevated angle. This works both ways, however, as you could have your clones do the same to you in any circumstance where it's necessary for you to obtain the pie yourself. Each level has a limited number of clones, forcing you to plan accordingly. You could have only one clone in one level, then up to ten in another. Although you get a certain amount of clones at each level, you probably won't have to use all of them, as there are multiple ways to complete many of the levels. This game is split up into five separate chapters, and there are 51 levels overall. Each chapter you face will force you to obtain pie in a different fashion. For instance, one entire chapter, you yourself cannot obtain any pie, forcing you to create a path for your clones to reach it. In another, all of your clones become evil, forcing you to only be able to interact with them by standing on their heads. And in another, you are forced to collect the pies in a certain order, forcing you to be craftier in your advances. Once you complete a chapter, you will unlock a special bonus short chapter. Each one of these chapters have five levels. The objective with these levels is to acquire all of the pie in a certain time limit, while only using a certain amount of clones. Once completed, your score will be sent to the Xbox Live leaderboards. And now for the reviewing. In case you haven't noticed yet, the graphics in this game are almost completely monochromatic. However, along with just being in black and white, there's also a grainy film-like look to them, giving them a sort of silent film look, reminiscent of the early 1900s. And while the graphics are simple, they still are rendered pretty well. As far as the gameplay, the puzzles themselves are very cleverly and very well designed, but I can't help but feel that some of the movements, particularly the jumping and gliding, are very stiff. It doesn't usually hinder your ability to complete a puzzle, however, it can be frustrating when you don't clear a gap that you think you clearly should. So, in conclusion, what do I think of this game? Well, it is a fairly well put together puzzle game, and it is fairly cheap, only costing you about $10. So, if you just so happen to have 10 bucks lying around, and you like puzzle style games, this is worth checking out. So, until next time, this has been Edog, gaming high and eating pie. See you next time.